and welcome to data test. Today we are having a look at what I think is one of the best Samsung phones and maybe one of the most futuristic ones as well. And yes, I actually switched to Samsung Note 2 for about a week or so. I've done it because I wanted to know how usable is the Android phone from 2012 now in 2020. And I have to say, it's better than I thought. But let's talk more about the phone itself. If there is one really bad thing about Note 2, it has to be the design. It is not about the way how the phone looks, it is more about the way how it feels, and that's the problem. Many phones from that era were made from really cheap plastic and uh, it just feels cheap and awful. It is also easy to scratch and crack, as you can see here. On the front there is a 5.5 inch massive display, I mean massive by 2012 standards, but even today it's quite large. On the right side there is a power button and the volume buttons are on the left. On the bottom there is a microphone, micro USB port and of course the stylus. Headphone jack is on the top. The speaker is unfortunately on the back, which is probably the worst placement. But back to that display. It is a 5.5 inch 16 to 9 panel with a resolution of 1280 by 720. However, the most important thing about it is the fact that it is Super AMOLED panel, which looks pretty good even today. There are many mods in the display settings. I keep it on automatic, but it's not always the best choice. Sometimes it is over sharpening the image or it is making it too saturated. Sorry for the bad footage, but my camera doesn't seem to agree with this screen. In real life, it is not flickering at all. Despite the huge display, the media consumption is not great. YouTube is sometimes lagging and the resolution is sometimes not enough. The speaker is not adding to the experience either. It is not very loud and it is on the back, so all the sound is going away from you. Hey, but at least you can still use your wired headphones. I already said that YouTube is lagging, but what about the other applications and the rest of the performance? Well, it is an old Samsung phone, so what would you expect? The software is buggy and the applications crash more often than not. I tried to play some games and it worked, but anything new will run really horribly and it won't be a good experience. Some problems are caused by the old hardware. This phone is using 2 gigs of RAM and it is powered by the Exynos 4412 processor, which has 4 cores with maximum clock of 1.6 GHz. But the bigger problem than specs is I think the software. Samsung TouchWiz was never really great and the age made it even worse, if that's even possible. Yes, you can root this phone and install a custom ROM. In the past I've tried installing Android 7.1 on this phone, but it felt worse, so I installed the original software again. Now it is running the latest supported version, Android 4.4.2 KitKat. So yes, this phone is not very fast. The only really good thing about this software is the amount of customization. You can change almost everything, and I also quite like the user interface design, but I am probably the only one who does. When I am talking about the Samsung Note series, I have to mention stylus. So is it any good? Yes, it is. The fact itself that the stylus doesn't have to be recharged is really nice, but the main purpose of stylus is to take notes. And that is really great, and also the drawing is quite fun as well. Stylus is accurate for a phone and it does have 1024 pressure levels, which is helpful when you're drawing or writing. But there are more features. For example, when you hold stylus over display, sometimes it shows more information. Samsung has also implemented mode where the handwritten text is converted, but I found the typing on the keyboard just faster and the converting doesn't even work many times, but it is fun to play with. Usually the biggest problem with old phones is the battery life and the Note 2 is no exception. The capacity is 3100 mAh. After years of use, battery doesn't last a day. Actually, most of the times I had to recharge it in afternoon. But you can replace it quite easily, so it's not a big issue. On the back of the phone there is a 8 megapixel camera, which can record video in 1080p. The selfie camera has 1.9 megapixels and it can record video in 720p. Selfie camera is just bad, I mean really bad, but the main camera is a different story. 8 megapixel camera in the time where phone does have 108 megapixel cameras is not a lot, but I was pretty surprised how capable the camera is. It is not the best anymore, but for an old phone it is great. Colors are nice, sharpness is great, dynamic range is not so great, but the HDR mode does help a lot. 
the video quality is fine as well, but the stabilization is not great, but I mean, it's acceptable. I will show a few samples. For example, this right here is being shot with Samsung Galaxy Note 2. To be honest, I think it's quite good for an 8 years old phone. Also, it's uh, quite windy up here. At the beginning of the video I've said something like this is one of the best Samsung phones, and it was really futuristic for its time, and I haven't really explained it yet. So, one of the best Samsung phones. Why? I think that's because it was really ahead of its competition. 2 gigs of RAM was a lot, the display was bigger and better, and for the time it was actually really fast. And now about the futuristic part. It is connected to what I've said earlier. Simply put, the phone had features which we see today in modern phones. There was a huge AMOLED display, the stylus with many features. The phone had a face unlock. Yes, it was only based on the camera recognition, but it was there. Another feature called Quick Glance, which was supposed to show you time and notifications when you waved over the phone. But yeah, that only worked when you used the force. This feature we still see in phones like Google Pixel 4 and despite the better tech in those devices, it is still more of a gimmick. The other feature was multitasking. Multitasking haven't officially made it into Android until Android 7. All of those features made this phone very future-proof. Sure, I would not recommend it now, there are better budget options. But it is still an interesting device. Thanks so much for watching, feel free to leave a like or subscribe and maybe let me know in the comments what kind of content would you like to see in the future. Bye!